Hey, eternal friends. Jesus is my rock. That's how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Preaching. Okay, you guys, I am in downtown LA at a very sort of futuristic hotel. Yeah, it's very, very small. It's called the Citizen M. So guys, today is November 3rd, and that means that today is my YouTube channel's birthday. It's Cal Preach's birthday. It has been four years of Cal Preach, you guys. Woo, woo! Today, we are going to talk about the three things that I regret the most in my life. Okay, let's get started. Regret number one. There was a boy that was in my class that had a big crush on me. Josh was super, super sweet. I mean, there was nothing wrong with him. I thought he was adorable and really, really nice. He just wasn't really my type. But he asked me to a Sting concert and I was like, huh. I agreed to let this guy take me on a date. He showed up at my house. He was dressed very nicely and I get into his car and he opened the door for me, which I wasn't really used to this kind of stuff when I was in high school. I mean, you know, high school guys are usually just not that way. We got in the car and we were heading to the Sting concert and it was a little awkward, like we were kind of struggling to make conversation. We were about, I don't know, two or three miles from my house and we stopped at a stoplight. I look over to across to the other side of the intersection and there is this really cute old man in this white sort of older vehicle. He um, had like a little, you know, bow tie on and glasses and actually taking notice of how adorable this old, older man was. The light turns green for the older man and he's about to cross us in front. Before he can cross this red little sports car, comes just flying out of nowhere right into the intersection and the old man had already pulled up a little bit and so the red car with two young men in it smashed right into this old man's car and the car went flying up in the air and did a complete complete turn and landed on the hood I just went, <gasps> I gasped. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, pull over, pull over, pull over. And he was like, what, w what are you talking about? And I was like, pull over. There was just this accident here, you have to pull over. And he was like, but we're gonna be late for the concert. And I said, you have to pull the car over. That old man is in there. It was like, what old man? I was like, there was an old man in that car. And he was like, I don't wanna stop. Other people will stop. And there were other people around. He just insisted on continuing to drive past this accident, which we were witnesses to, which we could have completely helped the cops when they showed up on the scene. I really wanted to stay there, not only to make sure that the old man was all right and that he survived the accident, I wanted to be able to talk to the police about what I had seen. Well, Josh just put the pedal to the metal and kept going. And I just remember, this heaviness sitting on my chest and I was just like, I want out of this car. Obviously, I've already seen enough of his character and we ended up going to the Sting concert. I seriously couldn't even enjoy the concert because I just kept thinking to myself, is this man dead or is this man alive? What I regret, you guys, is not having said to him, pull the car over i'm getting out and you go have fun at that sting concert but i definitely never ever ever dated that guy again and it was actually a horrible night when somebody tells you who they are listen and trust it because they're telling you he told me who he was in that exact moment okay <laughs> every single one of my supplements just fell on the floor <laughs> Okay, so this is number three. So back in the uh, early 80s or mid 80s, I should say, I was a model and I wasn't a supermodel, but you know, I was doing catalog and stuff like that. And um, I loved it. I loved being a model. And um, in the very beginning, they do this thing where they 
uh, want you to build up your portfolio and they want you to take pictures with photographers and just, you know, build up this book that you take with you for auditions and for go sees so that they can see how you photograph. And they told all the girls in the modeling agency that a French photographer was coming into town and that he was going to be looking through all the books and he was going to decide who he'd like to photograph and, you know, that he was only going to choose like six girls. And of course, there were hundreds of girls in the agency and everybody wanted to work with this, you know, very famous French photographer. So a few days later, I got a phone call and they said, you know, Fabio is very interested in shooting with you, but he'd like to meet you in person first. I thought that was a little strange, but I was like, all right, fine, whatever. And so I went to the modeling agency and they put me in a room with Fabio and he seemed like a very decent guy. And he asked me a few questions and then I left. Well, the next morning I got a phone call that Fabio wanted to, in fact, work with me. So I was, of course, thrilled. And so the following weekend, we decided to meet in Malibu, California, um, at this very particular beach that many people are familiar with called Zuma Beach. He told me to bring uh, a bathing suit and kind of like a cami and a little like something to wear over the bathing suit. I brought all those items and I showed up on time, clean face, clean hair, ready to go. There was a makeup lady there. She did my makeup and as soon as she was done with my makeup, she left. And it was just me and Fabio on the beach uh, and we started taking some pictures. And I was in my bathing suit and I remember distinctly, I was just sort of like, you know, frolicking in the water in my bathing suit and you know, whatever, throwing the water up in the air or getting down onto the sand and posing on the sand. Then he had me put the, um, you know, the little like over, over swimsuit. He had me put that on and we walked up to these like jagged rocks. That he says to me, okay, take off the, um, the over top thing. So I, I took it off. We're taking pictures, whatever. And at this point he's like, pull your hair back, you know, you know, sit down on that rock, bend over that rock, like, to, you know, put your head back and that kind of stuff. And I was thinking, this guy's a really good photographer and he's got some cool ideas. So then he says, so you want to be a real model, right? And I said, yeah, I want to be like, you know, a famous model and all of that. And he was like, well, if you want to be like the models in Europe, you need to take your shirt off, your top off. And I was like, excuse me? He said, yes, if you want to be top model, you need to take your top off for these pictures. My heart just started racing and I felt really, really uncomfortable. I said, I don't, I don't really want to take my top off. And he goes, well, then I guess you don't want to be top model. And he starts putting the cameras back into his bag, like our photo shoots over. And I was thinking to myself, I don't want him to report back to my modeling agency that I gave him a hard time. And maybe, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do because he's a professional and I'm just a new model. And I, I know I don't have a whole lot of experience and maybe he's right. Maybe if I do want to be a top model, I have to get over myself and just be comfortable taking nude pictures, you know. And I knew that in, you know, European magazines, women did take their tops off all the time. So I thought, uh, okay, you know, I'll, fine, I'll take my top off. This photographer was very French, you know, like super French. I'm pretty sure he had a baguette in his backpack and I'm not even saying that to, to sound weird. Honestly, I think he had a baguette. I'm pretty sure I'm recalling the baguette. I ended up taking my top off and he took his camera back, you know, back out of the bag and, and he was like, was that so difficult? And I was like, no, I remember being very anxious about it. I mean, people were around. I, mean, I don't think people were looking at us, but I just remember being anxious about it. And as I was taking my top off, and let's keep in mind, I did not exactly have two passengers in the front seat, if you know what I mean. I mean, I literally was part of the itty bitty committee. What were you thinking? I don't know. He starts shooting away and he's like, okay, twist that way, twist that way, twist this way. He was like, okay, photo shoot over. We'd only been shooting for about 40 minutes or something. And I thought this was going to be like a two hour photo shoot. I mean, that's sort of what my modeling agency had led me to believe. I had no reason to think otherwise, but 40 minutes into it, we're done. And so I thought maybe he was pissed off at me. I thought maybe he was angry and um, maybe he just didn't think I was all that beautiful or that good of a model and maybe he was just over me. So I say goodbye to him and I, and I drive home and I just have this eerie, you know, very uncomfortable 
feeling and I felt so much shame and I felt like, should I call my modeling agency and should I tell them what just happened? Or are they gonna think that I'm overreacting? I, I was afraid of looking like an idiot, you know, honestly, I really was. I was afraid that they were gonna be like, well, duh, he's a French photographer, he's gonna ask you to, uh, I didn't even, I, didn't, I really just didn't know what to think. So I made the decision not to say anything. About two weeks later, I get a phone call from my modeling agent and she was like, China, I need you to come to the office right away. And in the tone of her voice, I honestly couldn't tell if she was upset or if she had like really good news for me that I'd booked like a campaign or, and I was like, okay, okay, I'll be right over. Just a couple weeks had passed since that photo shoot. So it didn't really occur to me that this could be about my photo shoot so i get to the modeling agency and she's like she puts me in a, she puts me in a private room and she's like you need to sit down so i sat down and now i'm getting really nervous and she said to me she pulls out these images and, and she pulls out these photographs of me and i have no shirt on further from that photo shoot in malibu and she's like china what is this and i said well he asked me to take my top off and he told me that that was the professional thing to do. And he started to get angry at me. So I took my shirt off and she slammed the book closed and she slammed her hands on the table and she looked at me right in the eyes and she pointed her finger at me and she said, who do you think I am? And I was like, what? And she goes, who do you think I am? And I said, I, my, my agent. And she goes, yeah, your agent. I'm here to protect you. I'm here to make sure that this kind of doesn't happen. And she said, how could you not have told me about this? And I said, I just honestly felt embarrassed. And I felt, I, I, did, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. She said, I want you to know something. You're not the only model that this happened to with this photographer. And then I actually felt that was like a relief for me. And I said, oh, really? And she said, she said, yeah, no. And a couple of the other models took their bathing suit bottoms off as well. And I was just like, oh my gosh, thank goodness you didn't ask me to take my bottoms off because I'm being honest with you guys. I mean, I don't think I would have, but I was just so impressionable and I was so... Um, I, I was so manipulated so easily by people who I felt were powerful or more powerful than me that I really felt compassion for these girls because I thought, oh gosh, like I, I might have done the same thing. As embarrassing as that is to admit, like maybe I would have done that too. Yeah, my, my modeling agent did not find it amusing and she pretty much just pink slipped him and sent him home on the Concord, if you know what I mean. Oh my gosh. It's just makes me so sad the way people um, take advantage of young girls. They ended up not using that photographer ever again at that modeling agency. And uh, they ended up doing like a model's um, educational program so that something like this would never happen again. A lot of modeling agencies emulated that. There you go, guys. Those are my three things that I regret the most in my life. Like I told you guys, this month, a theme for California healing is the case for grace. And I really need to practice grace. Even as I tell these stories, it's cringeworthy. It's uncomfortable. It's embarrassing. Yucky. You know what I mean? It's just all around icky. And I don't like talking about it, but the reason I do it is because I know that it's gonna help somebody out there. And it's also gonna make other people feel less alone, less stupid, less isolated, just to know that this happens to other people too and that they're not alone in this world. I'm just glad that you got to know me a little bit better. <laughs> and I thank you guys for watching and I love you all so much. Peace of Christ. Hey, my sweet eternal friends. I look forward each and every Sunday to being with my small community of Holy Spirit activated ladies. Yes, yes, yes. So just come and watch God's miracles unfold as we listen to the powerful testimonies and we pray and we worship and we do short little Bible studies together. 
California Healing is every Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. PST, and the link to that is in my description. All you have to do is head on over to California Healing tier on my Patreon to join the live session every single Sunday. If you can't make it for the live sessions, the awesome news is that all levels of my Patreon will have access to the recorded sessions of California Healing, which is really great. So I'm so excited to talk with each and every one of you. I love just getting to know you guys on such a personal level. It's so awesome. Listen, we're not a church, but we support the search. Peace of Christ.